Hello love, welcome to part two of my three part video series on how to tie together focal points and backgrounds. In this series, I'm taking three of my mixed media muses and three of my painted backgrounds and finishing them out with lots of examples on how to set the stage for a cohesive art piece. These components are from two Skillshare classes that I created recently called Mixed Media Muse and beautiful backgrounds. And I will have more information about those at the end of this video and links to the classes down below. But for now, I invite you to relax and enjoy another video where I finish another piece of art and hopefully you will find it inspiring. Okay, now I have my drippy background and I have a new muse and her body's a little long, so I'm trimming that out. And then you might recognize this paper from the first video in the series. And also there's some of it in her body. You might see that rose there right in the center. So I'm gonna continue this element on throughout the series because one tip for doing a mini series of art is to have a string or a thread of components that are relatable throughout the series. And that way, when people look at each piece, but together as a collection, it will uh, tie together from piece to piece. So I cut out these components and they were a little large. And so I'm trimming them down. And that's the great thing about florals is that you can always crop them down and just trim them to fit your space. And one of the big keys that I wanna get across in this video is negative space. So these floral elements are a little bit busy, especially the kind of red, orange, rusty colored flowers. They're pretty busy and so is my focal point in the muse. So the thing about mixed media is that you can do lots of layering. You can put a lot of elements in these pieces, but you wanna stay away from having things be too busy and overlapping things that are too busy. So um, originally I thought this was gonna be kind of a symmetrical piece with her in the middle, but I scooted her over to give myself more room for some components on one side. I think if I had an, a bigger canvas, this might've um, worked for a symmetrical piece, but there just wasn't enough space on the side. So here I have this book page and that is pretty neutral. So that can be a little bit closer to her because it kind of fades away into the background. But the busy stuff, I want to give it enough room around her so that they read visually as two separate elements. And a lot of that is stuff that I trimmed away from her body. I have the lower portion of her body that I trimmed away on the side and then layered that over some a book page. And now I'm bringing in some three dimensional components. I have that corrugated cardboard that I painted out with a dry brush technique in white and then a key over that. So lots of layering. And now I'm ready to glue it down. So before I do that, actually, I guess I'm not ready. I just wanted to lighten up the background just a tad with a dry brush technique, just a little bit of white paint. And I can still see all of those drips and splatters, but they're just a little bit lighter. And now I'm gonna glue down my muse and I'm putting a lot of gel medium on the back. And it's okay if it goes over the edge when I'm gluing the back because I'll smooth that out later with my brush. And now I'm just gonna massage that in get it all smoothed out. There's lots of layers of papers in here, so I have to uh, be a little bit patient with it. I'm using some gel medium over the top and around the sides to get it nicely secured. And then you wanna smooth it out. All right, now I'm ready for my little cluster of ephemera. And I talk about ephemera a lot in the first video. So, um, I'm gonna put down the gel medium on the canvas now because this paper is rather flimsy and old, it's kind of brittle. And then I do a top coat to seal that in and give it more strength. And then I will put that flower over the top 
And I like to have my components framed out within the canvas. So that's what that back paper is really doing there, is giving it a little bit of frame of reference and then layers and layers and layers. I like how this floral element and the one on top kind of reach out over the edge of that book paper. Um, it just uh, goes outside of the lines a little bit and branches out, which I think is really pretty and gives it more dimension. And then with the key, this is a metal key and the gel medium is gonna work with it really great. It's like frosting a cupcake, except um, on a really thin piece. So I just go over it with a brush and smooth out any globs that are sticking out and um, making it seem as seamless as possible. And then I have some teal and white on my brush, just really lightly blending in the paper there. I wanted to build out her headdress just a little bit more. I felt like there was a gap right there. And now I'm going to enhance her face just a little bit. This is kind of like putting on makeup, giving her some more dimension, more depth in the features in her face, kind of outlining the eyes there, and then coming in with just a little bit of color. And this is burnt sienna, so it is a little bit of an earthy, warm, brown, uh, red color. Now I'm going to do my, um, my pen work. This is just decorative mark making dots, dashes, zigzags, um, embellishing the butterfly wings a little bit. I love this white permanent pen. It works really well. And I just carry little scribbles throughout, tying that together. And now I'm gonna do some gold. And I love metallic paint. I absolutely love it. It warms up the piece. It gives it some shimmer. You can uh, walk around it and see the reflectiveness uh, shining off of it at different angles. And uh, just carrying those marks throughout and then embellishing the flowers and the butterfly wings a little bit. It's kind of a transparent look and so um, that's really fun. And then I come around and do a similar thing with the teal to bring the color in from the background into my focal points. And a little bit of charcoal pencil to add some shadows and this is really fun to uh, kind of blur out with my brush. And I have, uh, you can do this with water or acrylic gel medium, and it'll just kind of make it fade away and give you a little bit more depth there. So that is everything. I love it. I, this might be my favorite one, but I, I love them all. Actually, the next one is really interesting too. Okay, so that's the second piece in this series. I'm going to leave more information about my Skillshare class in a moment, but before I do, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this inspires you to play with your mixed media compositions, and if you enjoyed this, I'd love it if you would help out the channel with a like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you want to make sure and catch the third video in this series. That will be coming out soon. And if you haven't seen the first one, there is a link down below for that. I love chatting with you about art and really look forward to your comments. So thank you again. Happy creating and much love. When learning to make art, most people focus on the subject of their pieces. But one of the most overlooked and most important components of a good work of art is the unsung hero, the background. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller and I'm an artist and instructor with over 20 years working in the arts. And one thing that I notice when working with students is that many people either treat backgrounds as an afterthought or they overwork them and they turn out too busy which distracts the viewer. And I used to be in the same boat. I didn't realize that it was my backgrounds that were falling flat but eventually, after lots of trial and error, I found that layering and texture are key because an interesting background will support your work, 
give your focal points a space to live in, and help tie the piece together so that it makes sense. So in this class, beautiful backgrounds for acrylic painting and mixed media, I share lots of techniques which I combine on three different canvases to create lush, attractive backgrounds. Each technique is interchangeable and you can layer them in any combination that you choose to fit your personal style. You'll learn about mixing colors on the canvas, contrast, drips, splatter, gradients, stencils, collage, semi-transparent layers, and quick stamping so that you can let go, get in the flow, and make juicy textured backgrounds that will draw in your audience. This class is right for you if you've felt like something has been missing in your art. Maybe you've thought about trying more textured backgrounds, but found it a little scary. Once you see how easy these techniques are, you'll be ready to jump in and have fun. In the end, you'll have several backgrounds ready to go so that when inspiration strikes, you'll be ready. So are you ready to play? I'll see you in class. Every artist and art lover cherishes the excitement of inspiration, and nothing embodies that inspiration quite like the concept of the muse. They symbolize creativity, inventiveness, imagination, vision, and beauty. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an artist and instructor with over 20 years working in the arts, but what I really do is help people gain creative confidence. Sometimes it's hard to tap into our inner muse, so I thought it would be fun to create beautiful muses as symbols of our own guiding lights, which we can have on hand as a stash of focal points for our mixed media works. So in this class, Mixed Media Muse, I create three different examples infused with rich textures, beautiful natural elements, and inspirational energy. You'll learn about materials and where to find public domain vintage images that are copyright free for your collage. I'll demonstrate layering and assembling, composition, adding semi-transparent acrylic color, and tips for making your muses lovely and filled with imagination. This class is right for you if you're drawn to beautiful papers and want to create whimsical figures without the need for a lot of drawing or painting skills. With these easy concepts, you can create as many muses as you like so you can have them ready to go for your future mixed media pieces. So are you ready to bring your inner muse to life? I'll see you in class.